Hello and welcome to another edition of our daily news program. Let's first start off by taking a look at today's top stories. The President of the Republic chairs a meeting of the Council of Ministers devoted to the prevention and repression of the illicit use and the trafficking of narcotics in addition to the modalities of granting land destined to investment. The President of the Republic receives the U.S. Secretary of State in charge of international organization, Michel Sisson. The President of the Republic extends a message of condolences to the family of the late Sidi Abdel Qadir Uthmani Sheikh and the leader of the Uthmaniya Quranic School in Olga. Army General Saeed Shingiri, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, meets with the French Army's Minister Sébastien Lecornu and the Chief of Staff Thierry Bucard. Good evening. Those are today's top stories. First, the President of the Republic, Supreme Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Minister of National Defense, Abdel Majid Tabun, chaired a, a meeting of the Council of Ministers dedicated to two draft bills related to the prevention of narcotics, whereas the second pertains to methods of granting lands intended for investment. The gist of the meeting with Melissa Kabash. After the opening of the meeting by the President of the Republic and the presentation of the meeting's agenda, the Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman presented the government's activity for the past two weeks. President Boon gave the following guidelines. Regarding the draft bill that defines the conditions and modalities to grant economic real estate belonging to private property of the state intended to achieve in investment projects, the president instructed to review and enrich the content of the draft bill, taking into account the following orientations. The spirit of law must be based on the citizen's freedom to invest in his field of specialty and avoid the dangerous deviations encountered by the country in the field of industrial real estate, stressing that Algeria's vision through this law is to encourage investment according to an integrated view for development takeoff that guarantees a stronger economic dynamism. The president also affirmed that granting lands for economic purposes should be accompanied by real legal flexibility so as to encourage and attract investment, taking into account the higher interest of the state, relying on these operations of a digital system in order to avoid bureaucracy, that the draft law takes into consideration an equal distribution of investment projects across the national territory, as well as the quality and objectives of the investment. Concerning a presentation on a practical measure to reduce the phenomenon of suffocation by burning gases, carbon monoxide inside homes, with the aim to preserve the lives of our citizens, the Council of Ministers decided, starting from this meeting, to assign Sonal Gas to provide citizens with a free alarm against carbon monoxide leaks. The building of residential projects in all its forms must include this type of system. The president instructed the ministries of trade and industry and startups to emerge their institutions so as to prepare for a new law that includes the establishment of laboratories of safety monitoring in all fields. Coordinate between the ministries of higher education, industry and startups to employ researchers and experts in these new labs. The president of the republic instructed the establishment of legal tax that prevent alteration of the heating systems, gas pipes and energy resources that supplies the residences so as to prevent their modification after receiving them. He also ordered the opening of laboratories for technical and quality controls throughout the national territory affiliated to the national company Sonal Gaz, specialized in monitoring household electrical appliances that causes accidents, encouraging local manufacturers to cover the local market's demand for high quality and safe heating systems to supply all housing units under construction. The president appreciated the content of the draft law related to the prevention of drugs and psychotropic substances, alongside the suppression of their use and illegal trafficking, as it contained measures to protect the society from this scourge, 
The Council of Ministers approved this draft bill at the end of the meeting. Regarding the public works sector, accelerate the establishment of a mixed company for the railway industry in cooperation with foreign expertise specialized in this field with the aim to reach a comprehensive national link with railways linking the north to the south and facilitate transportation for the economic operators. The railway extension must be a priority, especially for Murglat, Amnarast, Ghardaya, Al Mini'a, Kharj Bilat, and Peshar due to their economic and strategic importance. As for the agricultural sector, the President of the Republic instructed the government to redouble efforts to increase the production of agricultural crops, especially wheat, and raise its production to 30 quintals per hectare with an aim to achieve self-sufficiency as soon as possible. President Tabun renewed his orientations regarding the release of real estate in forest areas in the province of Tisim Silt for the realization of rural housing and agricultural activities. He also instructed the government to work according to a profound vision in all sectors instead of daily management and give importance to the citizens' expectations. At the end, the Council of Ministers approved decrees related to the appointment of high state officials. In another development, the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, received the United States Secretary of State for International Organization Affairs, Michel Sison. The audience took place at the Presidency of the Republic in the presence of the Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad Minister, Mtal Amamara, and Abdel Aziz Khalaf, the Principal Private Secretary of the Presidency. Following the audience, Michel Sison made the following statement. I am delighted to be here in Algeria on my first trip and to have just met His Excellency uh, President Taboon. I'd like to start by offering my condolences for the untimely death of three Algerian soldiers in a helicopter crash yesterday, and my thoughts and sympathies go out to their families. During my visit to Algiers this week, I also had the opportunity to meet with His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and his team, Algeria's National Human Rights Council, the Sandiash, senior officials from the Ministry of Interior, Civil Society, and of course, the leadership team of the United Nations here in Algiers. My visit this week has been an opportunity uh, to expand our multilateral cooperation with Algeria and to better understand Algeria's priorities across the United Nations system, including at the United at the Human Rights Council. Uh, as both the United States and Algeria are elected members of the Human Rights Council in Geneva. So during my meetings, I emphasize the importance of all member states defending the UN Charter and upholding the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So we look forward uh, to working with uh, Alger the Algerian government and with civil society during Algeria's upcoming term on the Human Rights Council on Geneva. And of course, I have really uh, been struck by the very warm welcome uh, I have had here in Algiers during the visit. That was Mitchell Sison speaking to our news reporter. In a different context, the President of the Republic sent a message of condolences to the family of the late Imam Sidi Abdul Qadir Uthmani, Sheikh of the Zawiya Uthmaniya of Tolga, in which he wrote the following. The Imam Sidi Abdul Qadir Uthmani, one of the valiant sons of Tolga, the land of knowledge and reform, was called back to his creator after devoting his life for science and knowledge and for the preservation of the Zawiya of his grandfather Sidi Ali bin Omar of Tolga. It is with deep sorrow that we received the news of the death of one of the prominent scholars of the Zawiya of Tolga, a destination that has always been popular among the scholars willing to drink from the sources of science, added President Tibun. In this painful ordeal, I pray Allah Almighty to surround the deceased with his mercy and welcome him in his vast paradise and to grant his family patience and 
comfort. To Allah we belong and to him we shall return, concluded the President of the Republic. In other news, and on the second day of his official visit to France, the Army General Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, Sayed Shingriha, was received by Sebastien Lecornu, the French Army's Minister. Further details with Ines Kilo. Army General Said Shingriha, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, was received by the French Army's Minister Sebastien Lucarnu. Other ministries' premises, where various French forces paid him the military honors. The Army General, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, had an extensive meeting with the French Army's Minister in the presence of the Army General Thierry Burkard, Chief of Staff of the French Armed Forces. The talks revolved around ways of enhancing military and security cooperation between the two countries. The meeting was crowned with the signing of a joint road map. At the end, the Army General, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, Saeed Chingriha, signed the Golden Book of the French Defense Ministry. Still in France, where the Army General Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, Saeed Griha, met with Army General Thierry Bucard, Chief of Staff of the French Armed Forces at the military school in Paris. In Esquilou, once again. Army General Saeed Shingriha, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, was received at the military school in Paris by the Army General Thierry Burkard. Chief of Staff of the French Armies, where a detachment of the French Army paid him the honorary salute. Army General, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, after listening to the national anthems of the two countries, reviewed detachments of the various French forces that paid him with military ceremonies. Subsequently, the Chief of Staff of the National People's Army held a meeting with his French counterpart, where they discussed ways of enhancing military and security cooperation between the two countries, after which the talks extended to include members of the delegations of the two countries. In a new development, the Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad Minister Ramdal Amamara received on Tuesday the special representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations and the head of the UN support mission in Libya, Abdullahi Batili. And no less than 20 activities have marked the Algerian production fair in Wakshat, which ended on Tuesday. 166 private and public Algerian enterprises represented the local Algerian products likely to interest the Mauritanian market. This economic event was an opportunity to give a real boost to the bilateral partnership and cooperation between the two countries. Still with the Inter-African Cooperation, the second edition of the Judicial Affairs Forum in Africa kicked off on Tuesday and was marked by the participation of several delegations of judicial experts. More details on this forum with Najah Tayyar. 
More than 600 international leaders in the economic sector were brought together around the major African legal and economic issues during the second edition of the Legal Business Forum and Awards. With the aim of promoting the economic vitality of the African continent from Algiers, the legal functions has become strategic in the economic performances. Uh, it is the second edition of the Legal Business Forum in Africa that gives us the chance to discuss very crucial topics and use the juridical department's role in business and the regulatory framework for renewable energies in Africa. The objective is to gather lawyers and juridical directors and also the company's directors for discussion. The discussions focused on the new legal framework of investment in Algeria. Lawyers and economists have studied African economy in order to highlight the driving role of the legal sector in the development of the African continent. It's a cooperation between the startups. I have an association meant to raise awareness of the legal community to accompany the Algerian companies to spread how an economic development. On this program of two days devoted exclusively to sectoral issues, understanding and solving, as well as panels and workshops intended to highlight the role of the legal sector in the development of the African economy. Abroad, the corruption case in the European Parliament bogged down more and extended to the highest levels of the Moroccan government, according to new revelations from the German newspaper Der Spiegel. Acquaintances between the Mahzen's head of intelligence and corrupt MPs were also put forward, and the case is still in progress at the Belgian prosecutor's office. Najah Tayar, once again. After having consulted more than 1,300 internal documents allowing a detailed reconstruction of the Moroccan Gate investigation, the German newspapers specified that the Belgian investigators have collected even more evidence indicating that the network of the former MP Pierre Antonio Panzeri was working secretly to influence the institutions of the European Union, in particular the European Parliament, for the benefit of Morocco. Der Spiegel also points out that Yassine Mansouri, the head of the Moroccan intelligence services, would have been directly involved in the attempt to influence the European parliamentarians. MP Andrea Cosolino would also be a part of the Panzeri work. If the implications of Yassine Mansouri is taken for granted, it would mean that the tentacles of the scandal would extend to the highest levels of the Moroccan government. The Der Spiegel reporters revealed that Mansouri was one of the children chosen to attend the royal college with the current Moroccan king. The signatories of the article also recall that the Rabat government was apparently ready to use the underhandedness to defend its interests in Brussels is not without reason. Also underline, among other things, that during his recent visit to Rabat, the head of the European diplomacy, Joseph Borrell, had indicated that Morocco was the largest beneficiary of the European Union Cooperation Fund in the region, with an expected total of 1.6 billion euros from 2021 to 2027. If the accusations of Morocco's involvement in the corruption scandal that has stained the European Parliament will be confirmed at the end of the investigation, there will be consequences, assures an official from the European Union quoted by Der Spiegel. Possible sanctions, the official said, that our range of restrictive measures at the diplomatic level and cooperation between secret services to sanctions against specific individuals. That was a report based on the Der Spiegel newspaper. Amid the corruption scandal in the European Parliament, which involves the Mahzen regime, the trip of the four Belgian MPs to Morocco and to the Sahrawi-occupied territories, which was paid by Rabat, created an outcry in Belgium. Organized last September, the trip aroused the anger, the anger of the political class, which wonders how to explain the support expressed by some deputies to the sinister autonomy plan of Morocco for Western Sahara. As always, the Moroccan streets are packed with angry citizens expressing their discontent of their current socio-economic situation. This time, it was the inhabitants of Gersif who took to the streets to voice their determination to keep fighting for real change. Melissa Kebash reports. <laughs> It's been more than a year now since these social and political tensions have spread across the Moroccan territories. The inhabitants of Gersif are calling on authorities to release opinion prisoners, respect their freedom of expression and ensure a fair trial to the journalists imprisoned. <laughs> A 
conviction, arbitrary arrest, torture. All these violent practices are perpetrated against journalists and human rights activists, and unfortunately, every citizen demanding his social rights. Despite all the demonstrations and sit-ins, the situation keeps worsening and is marked with the high cost of living, including basic foodstuffs. <laughs> The Moroccan people are fully blaming the Mahzan regime, incapable of dealing with its people, nor to respond to their legal demands. Despite all this, they remain determined to hopefully make a change in their daily socio-economic situation, and this through demonstrations and protest movements. To sports now and the Shang competition being held in Algeria. Mauritania qualified to the second round after beating Mali with one goal to nil in Group D, along with Niger, which defeated Cameroon with one goal to nil in Group E. And let's wrap up our news for today here on Canal Algérie. Thank you very much for tuning in and goodbye.